Okay, now that we have all those great patches that you programmed into the SR16 and donated to the cause here, I think that we should uh, back them up and save them for posterity. It's a darn good idea. Now, it's real easy to become complacent about that kind of stuff because 90% of the time, or 99.999% of the time, you turn it on, the programs are there, everything's fine. But, you know, these are backed up by internal batteries and someday it will go bad. It might be five years, might be eight years, but someday it will. And the other possibility, of course, is you could drop it or something like that, break a connection, have to get the thing repaired. And if you lose your patches as part of the process, that definitely adds insult to injury. You never need it until you really need it. And, and then you realize that you're up the river, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, losing patches is really terrible because it just takes so much time to come up with a great set of, you know, quadriverb patches or drum patterns. And to reconstruct them from scratch is just about impossible. I can't tell you how many musicians have, have said to me, gee, well, I, you know, I lost my data, I like, hit the wrong buttons, or I dropped the thing, or, or there was a glitch, or my, my uh, house got hit by lightning, and there was this big spike, and, and I said, well, you did have it backed up, right? Yeah, right. No, uh -huh. no. So, I mean, you really have to get into that habit. And something like the Alesis data disk is a real good way to store uh, SysX data. What System Exclusive does, uh, in this particular case of backing up, is it takes all the parameters of a quadriverb program, an SR16 pattern, a synthesizer, whatever, and converts that data into a format that's compatible with MIDI. It doesn't mean that it follows note on or note off or controller data. It's not that same kind of format. It's just computer type data like, you know, ASCII or what runs between computer printers or whatever. It's just data. Right. But it expresses all these different um, parameters and patches as a type of data that can travel over the MIDI line and be understood by MIDI equipment. Okay. So that's, that's the, uh, so the SR16 generates SysX data and then to load it back in, you can regain your patches just by loading in the same SysX data that you saved. Now the data disk um, what that does is it is dedicated to storing system exclusive, uh, system exclusive messages. Okay. So you set it up to receive, you give it the messages, it records it to disk during the receiving process, and you're ready to go. It's saved to disk, you can name the files, you can do a variety of other things. Now I should mention that um, there are several other ways to store system exclusive messages. Uh, sequencers will often store system exclusive messages uh, as part of a sequence. Um, several keyboards, such as the EPS, can also store SysX data. However, there are some disadvantages uh, to, to keyboards in that they generally have a limited amount of storage capacity. Uh, most keyboards will store about 64K of worth of memory of SysX. And it used to be that that was enough, but nowadays you're starting to get SysX dumps from complex instruments that are over 100K. Mm. The okay. uh, data disk can write to the full size of the disk, which I believe is around 800K. So you can store extremely long system exclusive files. Um, the other thing is with most keyboards, you, ha you lose the operation of the keyboard while you're doing the SysX storage and, and right. uh, retrieval. So, you ha so it basically goes dead while you're doing that. So if you're on stage, you have to kind of like forget what you were doing, switch over to that mode, go back, you know, whereas the data to load. Right. So if the but if the data disk is there, you can just be like punching up things and having data flowing out, you know, and setting up things for the next song or whatever. So that's why I mean a lot of people wonder, well, gee, what do I need a separate unit for? The other advantage of having a separate thing like the data disk dedicated to that function is you have a common disk format. You know, you have all your stuff saved in a nice way. If you go, if you save some stuff to a sequencer, some stuff to a keyboard, some stuff to another keyboard, you know, you have this disk and it's like, well, gee, what do I play this back through? And then you get into this organizational type of problem. Right. So um, this is a very, very easy process as backing up should be. First thing you want to do is set up the data disk to receive messages. So there's a button that says receive. Okay. And it says receive one sysx waiting for data, which means it's looking to receive one sysx file. Now the SR16 is, is equally obvious. There's a button that says backup. They obviously thought this was an important enough function not to hide it in some menu somewhere, right? right? But just Take to have a backup button. So you press backup, and again, I guess because they make the data disk, Elise has figured, well, let's have send out MIDI be the first page of the menu. Now there's other pages on here too for uh, saving stuff to tape, verifying what's on tape. This is for people who use cassette interfaces uh, to save their data. And that works too, but it's, um, much less predictable. You know, tape can get crinkly or uh, you have to get the levels set just right. right. Uh, your tape recorder, if you have the noise reduction on or something, that can mess it up. So I find saving through MIDI to just be 
far less hassle and well worth the expense of, of an added device, especially because it means I haven't lost any patches. Right. So, okay, so we press backup, we, it says send out MIDI, and then the display says press play, which is what the SR16 says when it wants you to do something to complete a function. So we press play. Now, when I press play, watch what happens on the display for the data disk. It will show that it's receiving SR16 data. Now notice also that the disk is doing its thing which means that it is saving that file right to disk as it's coming in. Okay. So you don't have to worry about you know, saving it now that it's in memory or something like that. It's, it's right already there. stored. It's ready to go. It is there for posterity. Hmm. Good. Now let's, let's pretend you wanted to send it back again. Well, it's system exclusive data. All the things receive it. The SR16 will know that it's supposed to receive the SR16 data. So there's no need to set uh, a particular control that says, you know, listen for data. It's already doing that all the time. Whenever oh, okay. system exclusive data comes in that relates to it, it'll say, okay. So to do that on the data disk, we can just say send. It says send a file. Here's the, the yes button. We say yes. Now watch what happens on the SR16. And there the display says loading MIDI. Now you see that really didn't take very long either. Not at all. So um, what this means is that it's a fairly small file, so you can probably fit all the patches you'll generate for the next 30 years on one disk, which is real nice. And then, and then lose that disk. Well, no, because there's a backup function on the data disk. So you can make a backup of the existing disk. Right. Have two copies. And what most, I would say the best thing to do is, um, you know, if you make multiple backups, store one in a remote location. You know, if you have a friend with an SR16 or a data disk or something, and right. that way if there's fire, flood, earthquake, uh, other natural disasters, at least there'll be a copy somewhere. Right. Good. So um, that's really all there is to SysX storage. The quadriverb works very much the same way. You just send the stuff out through MIDI. It gets stored on disk. You can reload it back at any time. And you can also name, uh, on the data disk, you can name the files with a distinctive name. Like if you come up with a whole bunch of patches for a particular guitar or a particular set or a, you know, a record, recording situation, you've come up with certain patches for, for a particular session. Right. You can just recall those particular sets of patches and, and load them right back in again. Great. Now there's more to SysX than that. Um, sy because individual parameters can be controlled by SysX, you can actually get in on a real bits and bytes level and uh, bits send... bits and bytes. Yeah, I'm, I, I had to at least mention it, you know, <laughs> that this exists. And what you can do is, you know, load little sysx messages into sequences and set up your equipment and all that jazz and get into real esoteric stuff. But for now, I think the only thing you really need to know is that sysx is a great way to back up your work through MIDI. Great. So that takes care of sysx. I think we'll close out with um, just one real quick example of synchronization because uh, to cover synchronization in its entirety would be another tape, which would probably take about four hours. Mm, okay. So uh, we'll set up a real simple start-stop continue type situation and show how that works. Sounds good. Let's do it. <laughs>